here's something that nobody's talking about. And hi. <sighs> Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you all for being part of it. If you would like to help out the channel by leaving a small donation below in the description is a safe, secure link to PayPal. I really appreciate it. Today, we are going over distributors. The reason I'm going over this is part of the Facebook group that uh, I and a few others help run. I do see people neglecting something and it's their distributors and then they break down or something goes wrong. So alongside of me doing body work in the background, and the weather's finally breaking. Thank goodness. Now it's time to start filming a lot more. Uh, I'm going to go over distributor maintenance, uh, how to maintain them, things you don't think about. And some of you may know all about it. and Some of you may not. So if you're new to the channel, you probably didn't scroll back and watch some of the videos that I've done prior, although not like this one. So let's get in it. Let's go over them. And I'll tell you what's coming up. And thank you, everybody who joined in the live chat last Sunday night. That was fun. I had a really great time. We'll do that again in a couple of weeks. Let's get on it. Now I have two different engines sitting here. This one has a 009 and my other motor has an SVDA, the uh, vacuum advance. So I'm going to show you them both, obviously. Uh, one thing I did want to go over, two things before we get started on distributors and how to maintain them so you don't get let down, is I wanted to show you two different things, okay? And I'm going to bring you in close right now. So now we're up close and personal. And what I did want to show you is a lot of times when you go to, let's say, change your points or do any work on your distributor, it's usually easier to actually pull the distributor. Now, wait a minute before you get crazy. And do them at the bench. Maybe put the distributor in your vise. Don't over tighten it and ruin the shaft. Okay. Now. If you take it out and do it at your vice, at your bench, it's much easier than bending over, trying to reach into the car and do your points or maintenance or anything. So when you go to do that, this is very important, okay? Do not loosen this nut. That is how you turn your distributor, all right? You loosen the 10 millimeter and you turn your distributor to adjust your timing. So you don't want to loosen that just to pull the distributor out to do any type of maintenance work. You will take a 13 millimeter socket and you'll be coming down through the top of the motor, obviously. So use a six inch extension on a ratchet. Only loosen this nut up and take it off. When you slide it out and you're not loosening the clamp, then you're not changing the timing. So when you drop it down in and put it back in, and tighten the bracket down, then it should be relatively almost the same. It shouldn't have moved. So that's one thing I did want to bring up. So let's go to the next thing real quick. So the other one you seen was a 009 distributor. That's a mechanical advance. This has a vacuum advance on it, okay, referred to as the SVDA or DVDA. And there's a reason for that, okay. Your SVDA has just a single port. Ugh on the front, I can't get that off, uh, to hook up to the side of your carburetor, okay? And when you hit the gas, causes suction, advances, the whole ordeal, okay? Advances your timing, I apologize there. Now this is a DVDA, which has two vacuum, or uh, a retard line on it, okay? As you notice here, there's a port on the back, and we'll get into maintenance in a second. I'm just trying to point out a few things. If you had a single one, this would not be there. This one would hook up to the side of the carburetor right here where that's plugged off. Do not hook it up to the front, okay? Put it on the side. When you hit the throttle, it pulls suction from here, okay? Because the hose would be going to here, and that's what advances the timing. On the 009s, it's a mechanical advance. Now, this is a DVDA. This line gets hooked up also, I believe on the front. I don't really run these. And when you hit the gas pedal, this pulls suction from here, advances the timing. When you let off the gas, this pulls it the other way, 
and it brings the RPMs down quicker. I believe that's how the DVDAs work. I'm really not a big fan of them. So before we get into maintenance, I'm going to show you something else important about the distributors while we're talking about it. Now, I said about not loosening the nut here, okay? You want to be able to just pull the distributor without moving the timing. Now, you would go down and hit your 13 millimeter nut, which I showed you prior, and then you can just pull your distributor out. Now we're gonna go over a couple of things. Let me put that on a workbench. There we go. And I'm gonna show you something else. Now this is what goes down inside of the distributor drive gear, right down inside of your engine case. See how, let me bring you up here. See how one side is shorter than the other? There's a larger side here and a shorter side here, okay? There is a reason for that. When you're putting it into the engine, it will only go in one way. Shorter side, longer side have to line up. Now that's very important. Now there's a reason that I showed that because I've had people on the group, I've received emails, private messages saying, Slade, my rotor is pointed completely the opposite direction and people panic. Panic may be a bit strong, but some get very nervous because they don't want to screw their motor up, and I understand that. However, if somebody had put that distributor drive gear in 180 out, then your rotor is going to be 180 out. And it's okay. That just means you rotate your wires on your cap, so number one is coming in in a different position. Here's a little picture right here of where it should be, technically. So if somebody did pull the distributor gear out for any reason and put it back in 180 out, you're still okay, all right? Your rotor's just going to be in a different position. Now, rotor positioning, before we get into maintenance, bear with me. I try to give information. Uh, the rotor positioning on a 009 versus the uh, SVDA and DVDAs will be in a different position. Uh, I believe the rotor on a vacuum advance is around, say, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, give or take. And on a mechanical advance, you know, then it's around like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. I'm trying to picture it in my mind. So, okay, I know I bored you with some of that stuff, but to me it's critical information. And I'm going to show you one more thing about fluctuating timing. When you're trying to time it, did you ever notice it's fluctuating around a little bit? I'm going to go over that real quick, and then we're going to show you maintenance on a distributor. Hang tight. Here's something that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention that nobody's talking about. And if there is, then I just missed it somewhere on YouTube. When you are timing your Beetle or your fast back, square back, bus, blah, blah, Carmen Gia, did you ever go to time it and it's fluctuating? While you're trying to adjust it jumping back and forth a few degrees here and there and i've seen people chase it going what is wrong why is it doing that i'm going to show you right now let me remove the cap on this one i have to show you on one that's out because i have to hold the rotor now this one here i'm holding the rotor this one's tight now i'm keeping the rotor from turning i'm holding it so it can't move i have seen some where this will move, where it's a little bit loose. And when that happens, it's the timing's jumping around. Also, these nubs here that sit down inside the distributor drive gear. A lot of the aftermarket ones now, these little nubs should seat, not tight, but sit right down in them slots so that it doesn't move Okay, so there's not play in the drive gear. This needs to sit tight in the drive gear. If it doesn't, you're going to have play. So the drive gear will start to turn, and this isn't turning yet with play. I hope that makes sense. Your timing's going to be skipping around. So make sure you buy a good quality distributor. And also, when you put it down into the drive gear, see if there's a lot of play in this. There shouldn't be. And that's why... A lot of times when you are checking your timing and it's fluctuating back and forth while you're trying to adjust it, that's why either this is loose or it's not sitting tightly because these teeth are not thick enough 
to hold into the drive gear firmly. I hope that made sense. I tried the best I could with it. Let's go over a couple maintenance things here. Okay, one more thing before maintenance tip. I know I talk a lot, I understand that, but I have so much information up here. When your distributor is removed from your engine, don't ever turn that crankshaft. Do not rotate the motor. Trust me, you'll chew the gear up in the drive gear and then you're gonna be pulling everything apart. So please, 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 if the distributor is out of the vehicle, do not turn the crank. Now, if you turned it like, you know, an inch, don't freak out because I've had people before say, oh crap, I turned it a little wee bit. You would have to start cranking it around and that's when you'll chew the gear up. So distributor out, no turn gears. We no not do that, okay? Obviously, I removed the distributor cap. So let's pull our rotor because these are things that folks don't do. They put their distributors in and they just drive along for a couple years, all of a sudden they're having issues. It's truly best to maintenance them once in a while. First things first, and you already know this, there is your points. Now, a lot of people on Petronics will go over that in the end when we're almost done. So what you are going to wanna do is check your points to see if they need replaced, okay? And if not, here, let me get something to open this up with. You're going to want to open the points up, spread them open. I have a screwdriver holding because I'm trying to film. Look in there and see if there's a lot of buildup on the contact part of the points. If there is, take a piece of sandpaper or emery cloth. Now, don't go crazy and use 36 grit or 80 grit or something nuts. Use a very light grade and sand them very lightly just to get the buildup off of the contact part, okay? So that you have a nice, beautiful spark. That's what you wanna make sure of, or replace if possible. Now, here's something else that's very important. Do you see your little nub right there on the points? That little nub there on the points gets opened and closed by the four lugs, I call them lugs, they stick out on the shaft. Your distributor drive shaft is not perfectly round. It has four points that are higher and then of course smooth lower. And it will bump the points open and closed as it spins around. Now what's important about this is you wanna make sure this is smooth and you wanna make sure it's greased properly because if not, it's going to stick and cause you problems. Now, something that you should do is always check this shaft for buildup, your distributor shaft. Make sure it's clean. If you have to, you can go ahead, remove your points, and then take a piece of like, say, 1200 paper and run it around there. Make sure you make us like polished and then put on the proper grease. Uh, don't use white lithium grease. I'll go over that in a little bit. And once you grease that up slightly, now don't cake it on her and act like a nut job and have it all smeared everywhere. A little bit goes a long way. Smear it around the shaft and this will open and close smoothly. And you're gonna have a great running car. Okay, next thing. Now you're gonna have to look really well. Down inside the shaft, do you see a little felt pad? Okay, now I'm sure you can. There's a little felt pad that sits down inside of there. What to do, you know, like, I don't know, check on it once in a while, you're doing an oil change or something. Remove your distributor cap, remove your rotor, you'll see the little felt pad, and take about three drops of oil and just drip it on there. Again, don't get sloppy and drip oil all over your points or anything else. Just take about three, even four maybe, just little drops of oil on that felt pad down in there. You should do that when you're maintenancing your distributor. So always take your distributor cap and check it very well. This is part of your maintenance. Make sure there's no cracks in it because that will get moisture inside and then you're gonna have problems. Check inside for corrosion. Obviously this cap's a lot newer, but look for corrosion and buildup around the contact points. If there is, take a little bit of sandpaper. Once again, a light grade paper, don't go crazy and clean these contact points with some sandpaper and polish them up. Make sure your springy dingy's working. Make sure everything's okay there. And just check, take a look around. I know that you think, oh, you put them in and roll for a while, but if you don't check these things, you're gonna get let down on the road somewhere. 
It's just part of your maintenance. Wow, it looks really nice. Next is your rotor. So pull the rotor, check it. A little bit of sandpaper there, a little bit of sandpaper there, and once again, not heavy sandpaper. Clean it up, make it shine, make it shine. Make sure everything looks good down inside. But clean these contact points up on here. If in fact it looks worn at all, throw it out and put a new one in. Don't waste your time trying to make something right that is wrong. We are on to the condenser. Now, obviously you should be carrying a condenser around with you. And we'll go over that before I sign off momentarily. Check the wires that are going into the distributor from the condenser. A lot of times these end up very hard and brittle from the heat of the motor and they will break off. So you definitely want to check that to make sure it's okay and in decent condition and also look inside and see if there's any breaks anywhere in it. This is routine maintenance that should be done. I'm not going to start giving information on what brand to buy because I don't like doing that. It's like an oil debate. Uh, I should make a film on oil. What oils to use, blah, blah, but we'll see. Uh, change your cap and rotor if needed. If you can clean the contact points up on them, just do that. You know how to check them over and make sure they're right. The spark plug wires, check the bake light ends you know, for cracks, stuff like that, make sure they're okay. What I'm talking about is you have the hard plastic at the ends of the spark plugs leads. These are Bakelite, they're that hard plastic. Now from all the heat from your heads constantly, at like any type of plastic type of material, is gonna end up getting very hot and turning hard and then it becomes brittle. So always check Pull them off, take a look at them, see how everything looks. Is there any cracks? Because you'll have a jumping spark over to the cylinder head. So I hope that made sense. Uh, otherwise, that would be your maintenance for your distributor. Now, a lot of people will say, run electronic ignition, run Petronics. I may. There's a lot of high-end stuff out there now. And honestly, I kind of like the points because... I know they say you can keep an extra pair of points in a glove box, which I prefer to do. Extra cap, rotor, points, condenser when you're on a long haul somewhere and then you don't have to worry. One thing I recommend, if you're going to start traveling hardcore, what you can do is if you have an extra distributor, they're so cheap now a lot of them, is set the timing. Do not loosen that bolt like I told you before. Loosen this bolt and lift the distributor out and throw it in your glove box. If you have a distributor failure or something goes wrong and you're out on the road, you're just sliding the distributor in, tightening the nut, it's already timed. I know that's a bit excessive, but that's just a little tidbit along the way for you. Uh, but that's your distributor maintenance. Uh, will I ever run Petronics or a high energy system? Maybe, we'll see. But with points, you can always make it back home messing around with them. But you can carry an extra set of Petronics in your glove box and drop them in and keep rolling. Now, what I have to do while I'm in the middle of doing body work, I'm not filming as much of the body work, but I am filming a little, and I'll put it all together in the end where I can speed it up and show you. I got to bring this bad boy out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dip them in the ultrasonic cleaner, all of my cooling tins for the motor, you know, everything, because it's that's pretty big ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to sand them and paint them and then do a complete cooling tin installation like I brought up before. If you want to see me time lapse some of it, clean them up, show you how this works, uh, cleaning the cooling tins, painting them, leave it in the comments down below. I am going to do a complete cooling tin installation though, regardless to show that video. So, okay, that was it for today. I hope I didn't bore anybody. However, sometimes these type of videos are needed if it helps one person. So thank you again for the live chat last Sunday. I had a great time with everybody. Not this weekend here, but the following weekend, I'll probably host another one. I hope everybody's safe, healthy, and happy. Thank you all for being part of it here, and I'll see you next time.